Welcome back to Cell Biology Lesson 3. Um, this one is labeled Required Practical, but um, as you're probably aware, it's a video, so we won't be able to do any uh, practicals with you at this moment. Uh, but that being said, please uh, make sure that you take the time to go through this lesson. It won't be too long, um, or at least I'll try to make it as short as possible. Um, but before we begin, please make sure that you do have um, the required tools in front of you, like a pen uh, or pencil, highlighter, um, and if you're making uh, annotations on a digital copy or a physical copy, either one works. Um, and with every lesson, if you could pause the video right now and get started with the do now. Perfect. All right, so uh, let's go through these um, quickly so that you can get on with the what the practical could have been. All right, so number one says, state what an electron microscope uses instead of light. So this is from the last lesson where we looked at electron and light microscopes. And just like the name implies, this one uses electrons. Okay, number two, suggest a top magnification for a TEM. So remember that TEM stands for Transmission Electron Microscope. Uh, which means that if it's an electron microscope, it's much, much more powerful than a light microscope. And the specific number that we're looking for is 10 million times. Number three, identify what building block of life Robert Hooke observed life is. So Robert Hooke is the scientist who wrote the book um, on magnification and microscopes. Um, I think it's called Micrographia. And he was kind of the first person to coin the term cell, right? Um, even if you didn't know Robert Hooke, um, the cell is the building block of life, if you know the definition of a cell. So you could have got that answer there. Number four, identify why chloroplasts are so important to plant cells. So chloroplasts are the green parts, um, and it's actually what makes plants green. Um, and you should know that chloroplasts are related to photosynthesis, which are required to allow plants to absorb energy, right? Number five, state what a vacuole contains. So going back to some of the organelle functions and what they do, a uh, vacuole or a permanent vacuole contains cell sap, which is kind of um, going to give us the answer to number six. Identify why the vacuole contents are important. So the vacuole contains cell sap, which is pretty much kind of a, a nutrition storage for the plant, okay? So when resources are low, so maybe um, it's cloudy for a couple days or it doesn't rain for a week, okay? Um, the plant needs to have a location in order to um, absorb some energy from, and that's gonna be stored inside their own vacuoles. Number seven, state the definition for magnification. All right, so magnification, um, was from last lesson, and I'm just going to give you the definition that we got from it last time, which is increasing the amount that is visible to the human eye. If you also wrote anything along the lines of enlarge the image, um, that's acceptable as well, because that way I know that you understand what it means to magnify something. And the last one, number eight, state the definition for resolution. So again, I'm gonna be taking the definition just to be as crystal clear as possible, and that is how clear an image is for the, uh, or sorry, how clear an image is, or you could put the ability to distinguish between two different points. Um, so the example I gave last time was if you have an image on a computer that looks kind of blurry, and you wanna see the details and you enlarge that photo but still stays blurry, that means that that photo has a low resolution, okay? Um, but if you have a very high resolution, you can enlarge the image many, many times and you'll be able to, the detail will still be there. All right, perfect. So please make sure that you have all the correct answers, um, either in a green pen or a red pen, just show that you are making the uh, right annotations, okay? Right, so today would have been the practical where we actually got to use light microscopes. Um, and if you're a little bit disappointed, don't be. Um, it's not the most exciting uh, practical in the world. Um, and you will have plenty of opportunities um, every year to look at microscopes um, if you need to. Okay? So uh, to begin, there is a short clip. Um, that is in your booklets with, um, with that link right there. So what I've done is I've shortened down because I know many students have a bit of difficulty typing in every single letter and it is case sensitive. So 
if you type into your um, address bar on Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox, whatever you use, if you just type in HTTPS um, colon forward slash forward slash uh, tinyurl.com slash Y8RGE4GB. If you just type that in, it will take you to a YouTube video um, where you can actually visually see what we would have done in class. So they show you how to handle a microscope, how to use it, um, what's the appropriate way to use it, things like that. So please take the time to watch that video. It's about 10 minutes long, um, but I promise you will understand so much more about microscopes if you watch that. Right, so as we do the practical, obviously you'll be able to see some of the slides that, um, that, the, that the science department has prepared for you. Um, and you would have been able to create your own slides, I believe, with onion cells. Uh, you'll be able to stain them so that you can see them. Uh, but one of the most important things about looking things through a microscope is not just seeing them, but it's actually recording what you see. So this is the reason why you know scientists like Robert Hooke was able to um, be so convincing, because he had actual images of what the cell looked like. So an important thing about when you're drawing these microscopes uh, images is that you need to let, let people know who are seeing them how big um, the actual size of, of whatever you're looking at is. So what you would have done is draw three different images at three different magnifications. So if you recall, on a microscope you have different objective lens and each objective lens gets stronger and stronger. So you might have four times, 10 times and 40 times. And with each one, the image will uh, become much larger. But if you notice the difference between a four times and a 40 times image, it almost looks like you're looking at completely different things. And to someone who wasn't in the classroom or in the lab where you're looking at these things, they might not know. So you have to put the magnification in order to tell people, um, basically, this is what it is. Okay? Or this is, this is how closely I was looking at it. So how do you actually get the magnification? Well, um, when you're looking at images, I'm just reading on line 13 here, when you're looking at the images, you may be asked to work out its original size. And to do that, you need this equation, all right? So this is in the blue box in the center here. Magnification equals image size over actual size, or image size divided by actual size. And you may have seen a triangle like this before, um, working with different equations in science. Um, and the, the basic idea of this triangle, if you, haven't, if you haven't learned it, is basically if you are looking for, um, say for example, magnification, then what you would do is um, take your hand and cover the M. What are you left with? The I and the A, correct? And notice the positioning. The I is over the A which means that magnification equals image size over actual size. Does that make sense? So let's try it with another one. If I had uh, a problem where I didn't know the image size, same thing, take your hand and cover the I. What two letters are you left with? The A and the M, correct? So that would mean that image size equals actual size multiplied by magnification, all right? Because they're not, one is not over the other, they're next to each other, okay? So image size equals um, actual size times magnification. See if you can figure out what would happen if you didn't know the actual size. Okay, so what you should have done is take your hand and cover the A. And what are you left with? the I and the M, and where are they positioned? Right, so the I is over the M, which means that actual size equals image size divided by magnification. Good. Okay, so at the bottom here, you'll see that I've put um, some examples, okay? So magnification equals image size divided by actual size. We, we can tell that from the... Um, the equation right on the middle there. So if you have an app, uh, or sorry, the image size is five centimeters. So that means that the image size, what you're looking at on a paper um, is five centimeters. But the actual size of what you're looking at, the cell, excuse me, is 0 0.01 centimeters. So what you would do 
is you would di divide 5 by 0 0.01, which gives you 500. Okay. Now, notice how I didn't put any units. Uh, magnification just equals 500. So this is because uh, magnification, when you think about it, magnification is not a length. So you can't put centimeters, right? Magnification is just basically how many times larger is it than the original size. So that means that if you're looking at a piece of paper that has a picture of a cell um, that is roughly about five centimeters wide, then... Um, and the actual size of that cell is 0 0.01 centimeters, then basically what you're saying is this picture that I hold in my hands is 500 times bigger than what the actual um, image is. Okay, And that's essentially how magnification works or how you um, calculate magnification. All right. So um, let's try a different one. So if you have an actual size, all right, or sorry, if you're looking for actual size, same thing, right? You cover the A, and you're left with i and m, all right? And note the, note the position of the i and the m, right? So image size divided by magnification. So in this sense, um, you're looking at a piece of paper and your image, right? The size of the image is three centimeters, okay? The size of the cell. Um, and you notice that the magnification is 400. It says right there in the bottom corner, it says it's 400 times bigger than it should be. So with that, you can actually calculate, well, if I have a picture that's three centimeters and I know that the magnification is 400, then I should be able to calculate how big the cell actually is, okay? So you divide those two numbers together and what you get is 0 0.0075 centimeters big, okay? Um, notice here again with the units, I've put centimeters because you are looking at an actual size. So you actually measure, you can measure at least, um, the actual size of the cell that you're looking at. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a little bit more practice here, just one more. So this is what I mean by image size and actual size. So the image on the left, okay, um, would be your actual size, okay, or the real size. Um, so this cell here specifically is 0 0.05 millimeters big, okay, that's the real size. Now the, um, what you see on the picture, right, so if I printed this out, you might be able to measure out that the size of the cell on a picture is 100 millimeters, okay? And, to, and what you would have to do is calculate the magnification of, of this cell. So um, remember the, the formula that we use, okay? Um, and that is magnification equals, right? Magnification equals image size divided by actual size. So your image size would be 100 millimeters, Right, that's the one you're looking at, and your actual size, the actual size of the cell, is 0 0.05 millimeters. So what you get is a magnification of 2,000 times. All right, or just 2,000 is, is acceptable as well. Okay. All right. One more thing before we move on and get to the end of the lesson, and that is conversion. Okay. Um, you might notice in the first slide I use centimeters, in the second slide I use millimeters, and now there are some units here that you might have heard before but you've never actually seen um, used, which is micrometers and nanometers, right? You've, you've probably heard of it before. They're actually really, really small. So I'm going to start reading on line 19 here. Uh, when calculating magnification, all measurements need to have the same units, all right? So for, uh, for example, millimeters. Using microscopes means uh, using tiny measurements, so you need to be able to convert and understand standard form. Makes sense, because if you're looking at cells, then it doesn't really do you any good to measure things in meters, does it? So that's why we have smaller measurements, um, such as micrometers and nanometers. All right? And the important thing is, when you're doing this, then you don't have to use um, you know, very complicated or numbers, you know, very big numbers. You can just type in, you know, one micrometer instead of 0 0.0001 millimeters, okay? Um, what it says on the other side, so where it says 1 times 10 to the power of negative 3, that is what's called um, scientific form, okay? And it's something that's used in science, and if you don't understand it at this point, that is completely okay, as long as you understand that a micrometer is 0 0.001 millimeters. Um, the 1 times 10 to the negative 3 basically is scientific notation 
of writing 0.001 in simpler terms. Okay, and, and you'll understand once you see it more often. Um, the most common places that we use this is chemistry, um, because when you're talking about uh, molarity or concentration, you're talking about the number of molecules, which um, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, molecules, right? Depending on what you're working with. All right, so let's look at these images right here. So these are, this is the same one from the, the previous slide. You have 0 0.05 millimeters and 100 millimeters, right? For actual and image size. But if you convert 100 millimeters, um, what you get is one millimeter is equal to 1,000 micrometers, okay? Um, so what you get with 100 millimeters is you get 100,000 micrometers, okay? And the 0 0.05 turns into 50 micrometers. Um, you still get the same magnification, right? But for instance, writing 0 0.05 millimeters might be a little bit more confusing than 50 micrometers, right? Um, it also rolls off the tongue a lot better. You know, this cell is 50 micrometers long instead of saying this cell is 0 0.05 millimeters long, okay? All right, um, so that's pretty much all the mass that is included in this lesson. Um, the next one, uh, these are some images inside your booklet, and they give you an idea of what TEM and SEM images will look like, and I showed you this last lesson, um, but I just want to show you um, another world that we can see. All right, so with the TEM, remember that transmission electron microscopes will give you a 2D image, right? But you can actually see through the cell, all right? So the image of a chloroplast on the top left there, you can actually see that there are lines inside the chloroplast, which we have discovered that look a little bit like pancakes, all right? And on the top right, you can see an image of a bacteria, and you'll notice that there's no defined nucleus. That's a very important part, all right? So imagine... Uh, growing up your entire life thinking that all cells have a nucleus and then you find this bacteria that doesn't have a nucleus, right? So when people first found out about this, they were really surprised, okay? Um, the bottom two has to do with scanning electron microscopes which, which give you a 3D image. Now remember that 3D images has its advantages and disadvantages, right? So a big disadvantage is you can't see the inside of whatever you're looking at. So for instance, the ant head, you can't see its brain, right? Um, so is it fair to say, I know most people think it's its head, it has a brain in it, but if you can't see it, then how are you gonna prove it, okay? But what you can tell is that the ant head has lots of these little hairs on it that are basically receptors or feelers, right? So that it can actually feel things on its head. Um, on the bottom right, that is essentially a needle and a thread. So what the surprising thing here is that a thread, no matter how fine it looks, is actually comprised of many, many fine fibers, okay? I'm going to show you a couple more images here that are, um, they might not be electron microscopes, but they're definitely um, blown up images, right? Very, very close up images of things that maybe you might not uh, recognize, okay? So see if you can figure out these two images right here. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an, uh, a chance to pause the video really quickly and, and maybe discuss it with someone around you. See if they can figure it out, all right? Okay, so the one on the left, all right, um, the one on the left is actually a peacock feather, okay? So you know those animals that have really bright feathers, you know, they like to show it off. That is a peacock feather. The one on the right, okay, no, it is not some... Uh, trail mix or anything like that. This is actually grains of sand. Okay, so if you go to the beach, pick up a fistful of sand and put it under a microscope, this is what you're gonna see. Okay, all right. See if you can figure this one out. All right, so this one here is actually a banana. All right, so this is the middle of a banana. If you cut it in half, um, and tear it apart, this is what you're going to see. All right, last one here. All right, if you guessed that this is marshmallows and chocolate bits, you are incorrect, um, but you got the right colors. This is actually salt and pepper. All right, so hopefully these images kind of give you a, a really good idea of what um, 
microscopic images look like. All right. Um, and you can go onto Google and just type in, you know, can you guess these microscope images? And you'll find tons of these little quizzes and such that are quite fun to do, actually. Okay. All right. The last thing that we're going to do is just finish up with the knowledge check. So go ahead and pause the video and just finish off these eight questions really quick and we'll go over them together. Perfect. So number one, uh, state where the specimen is placed on the microscope. So this one, hopefully you've watched the video that I put on the first couple slides there where it has the tiny URL. Um, and this one is the stage. Number two, identify what part of the microscope clears the image for view. So this one, I'm not particularly fond of how it was worded, but basically it's asking what part of the microscope do you actually use to see the image? And that one will be your eyepiece. Number three, state what type of cell you are looking at. So number three, um, if you didn't get it, that's fine because this is what I would have asked you if we had done the practical. Um, and if you watched the video, you might have figured it out. Uh, we were going to look at an onion cell, okay? Number four, identify the equation for working out magnification. So going back to that triangle, all right, magnification equals what? All right, so the answer to that is magnification equals image size divided by actual size, okay? So um, the triangle is there to help you remember uh, basically what different forms of the equation you can get. Number five, state two things that have to be included on a drawing. So um, this is the reason why I went over magnification and things like that. Uh, but basically, I, I gave you three things, but if you have any two of these, it'd be great. So first thing, you need your magnification. Okay, you could put total or just magnification. Um, you also need a title, right? You need to know what you're looking at and also any important annotations. So if you want to label your diagram, this is a nucleus, this is a cell wall, things like that. That would also be really important. Number six, state the, oh, sorry. State the function of the cell membrane. Uh, this is what controls uh, what enters and leaves the cell. There you go. Number seven, state the function of a mitochondria. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Um, and this is going back to knowing your organelles and their functions. So the mitochondria uh, provides the cell with energy. And the last one we're gonna get is identify what a cell wall is made from. Uh, and this one is going to be cellulose. All right, perfect. So please make sure that you have all the answers. Pause the video if you need to one more time. And thank you everyone for watching and hope you have a wonderful day.